and as political appointees and others begin to resign from their current status to contest the 2023 general elections, all eyes are on how the uh, offices will be run in a short term. A legal practitioner, Liberal Soshoma, and a political analyst, Olufe Melosin, are advocating that those in charge of uh, checks and balances adopt structures to ensure there are no gaps. Our political correspondent, Justin Tabeku, takes a look at these issues. There have been contentious positions as regards the constitutionality of Section 84.12 of the Electoral Act 2022. In fact, President Mohamed Buhari protested the constitutionality of the controversial provision of the newly assented electoral law. Others have argued that the section of the Constitution is able to disenfranchise people from vying for electoral offices. A legal practitioner, Libra Soshoma, countered this. It does not disenfranchise anybody because the provision of the Constitution actually limits participation for civil servants. That if you are in the employment of the government of the Federation or of the state, that you cannot contest for an election except you resign one month before the election. And the Court of Appeal had heard that political office, uh, political appointees are not in, employed in the government of the Federation of the State for the purpose of that section. And, and so once that, what that means is that if you're a political appointee, you can remain in office till even, you know, co even contest for election, you know, while in that uh, other office. A political analyst, Olufemi Lawson, shared the same view. He insisted that a section of the law would limit the excesses of the political class. I would want to uh, say that morally, it is, I don't think we even need a law to this extent to tell you that, come, you have a, an ambition to pursue in Jigawa State, then why are you sitting in Abuja as a minister? If truly you are a very serious candidate. One of those vying for the highest seat in government is the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. There are questions about how his latest ambition could cause a divided attention in carrying out his current duties as the nation's second in command. The VP's attention certainly would be divided just the same way a sitting president who is vying for a re-election's attention will be divided. So, and the question is, what we should do is to ensure that there is proper monitoring, not just a divided attention, to ensure that the job and the functions of that office is properly carried out. The truth is that pursuing a political ambition is a natural dis distraction. Politicians will continue to aspire for other higher positions. Politicians will continue to even demand for what they do not deserve. But it is the duty of you and I to say, no, you don't deserve it. So those who have had competent ministers as deputies should hand over to them, brief them. Those who have not had should use the next few days to get them carried along so that the duties of state will not suffer. INEC has given political parties between April 4 and June 3, 2022 to conduct primaries. This means that public office holders seeking to be elected must resign before June 3rd when INEC expects that all issues on party primaries must have been resolved. Meanwhile, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, ought to have issued a secular stating a deadline on when they should resign. But he has not, as President Buhari has not given directives to do so. Nigerians are watching to see how this pans out. Jacinta Ubuku, Positive News. Now, joining us to discuss the seeming controversy is Malaki Ogoma, who is the immediate past national president of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. Thanks for joining us on the news. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Others Hello. have Thank argued. Opportunity. Good evening, viewers. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Now, uh, a political party's constitution or guidelines for its members should not be confused with or uh, subordinated to the Nigerian constitution. Both are valid, parallel, and independent. What can you say about this? Well, uh, 
Again, I can barely hear you, but I, I imagine that your question has everything to do with the hierarchy of our laws, uh, whether the rules or provisions of uh, regulations of political parties can supersede and override the provisions of the Constitution. Okay. Um, that is rhetorical. It is given that the Constitution itself is supreme. The supremacy is asserted in Section 1, Subsection 1 of the same Constitution that proclaims itself supreme over every other law. In fact, it goes ahead under subsection three of the same section one to insist that if any other law, whether subsidiary or you know secondary law, as the case may be, runs in conflict or at variance with the provisions of the constitution, such other law to the extent of that inconsistency shall be null and void. Um, I imagine that this is where uh, the controversies have arisen in relation to the provisions of the electoral act uh, that has generated sufficient controversy regarding section 84, section 12 of the electoral act amended 2020. Sandy clearly is that where political parties, which are very serious uh, political institutions, uh, vehicles through which uh, democracy is midwived and sustained uh, to take steps, they must do that in full recognition and cognizance of the express provisions of the, of the ground norm, which is the Constitution, where it, uh, it undermines that precautionary position, it operates at its own peril and at its own risk. That, that would be my take, if I understood your question very well. Okay, well, that, that's well said. Uh, what does this constitution now say about this issue of uh, resignation before contesting? Well, the constitution as at this moment and as amended is to the effect that where any Nigerian who is in the public service of the Federation, either at the federal level or at the sub-national level, that is the states, desires legitimately, which is a right that inures to all of us, to contest or participate in an election, such a person must resign, withdraw from that service at least 30 days before the said election. The constitutional provisions are clear from section 66, subsection F, section 107, subsection F, and so on and so forth. So the constitution is interested in public servants in the public service of the federation and the states, as the case may be. But what has introduced a rather controversial dimension to this whole situation is the amendment uh, in, in, in 2022, where section 84, section 12 of the electoral act was uh, promulgated and signed into law. That provision is to the effect that political office holders, if you like, political appointees are precluded from participating in primaries of their political parties if they do not resign a month before that or those primaries. That is a controversy now. So, um, luckily, uh, and this is where the judiciary intervenes in the, in the interplay of political powers in the country to interpret, and that is the case that came up at, uh, at I think, Omar here, where that provision of the, uh, of the electoral act was uh, struck down. However, uh, 
and I'm, I'm, I'm certain that you should be aware, the Court of Appeal, before whom the appellant who lost the matter at the lower court ran to, took a preliminary position granting the application for state of uh, the execution of the of the uh, order of the lower court. So as of today, section 84, section 12, to all intents and purposes, is still the, the extant law. In other words, political appointees, political office holders who desire to contest in political party primaries are obligated to resign the, from those offices 30 days before uh, they said their primaries. So that's the position at the moment. You see this as uh, a factor. You, you know, uh, you, you are the interviewer's delight any day, any time, because I was uh, quite yeah. having a good time <clears throat> listening to you. So uh, do you see this you. as a factor capable of discouraging those who have future considerations for uh, public office appointments? Well, it, it, let us let us even uh, put this issue in some context and okay. uh, see whether we will make uh, some serious meaning All right. regarding the whole business of nation building. Mm. You see, it is not just about it is not just the law, however important and crucial it is, that regulates human conduct, human behavior, and nation building. It's not only the law. The law is very, very important, no doubt about that. But you see, in the business of nation building, a nation will, or a people, should be able to build a consensus around where they want to be and where they have to go to. We have seen over time, no less in this dispensation, that quite a number of interplay of forces and factors conspire in a very unholy manner to uh, jeopardize the sort of progress that we ought to make in our efforts towards participatory democracy. And what I mean by that is that there, there seem to be in the configuration of our setting a pattern that makes participation somewhat difficult, essentially because level playing grants are, are not created. Hmm. So the legislature, the legislature has seen that situation. I see. The legislature has apprehended that situation. And the legislature had invoked their powers and intervened through legislative engineering by creating this section 84, subsection 12. Indeed, what they seek to achieve is that members of the executive arm of government who mischievously manipulate and uh, appropriate the, next guest there. The, the retinue of political appointees in their favor creates a very unstable playing field because what it does is that most of these political appointees in the respective political parties operate as automatic delegates to that Congress. Hmm. That, in the view of the legislators, already undermine their own participation in the game. So the way to strike a balance is to introduce this law. But in doing that, they have uh, almost overreached themselves because, like you have heard, the courts are already kicking. I because see. right in the same constitution, away from the section that talks about the supremacy of the constitution, 
Section 42, Section 42, mm. frowns at any form of discrimination. So if for any reason you are promulgating a law that tends to disenfranchise me by reason of my political status or creed or sex mm. or yes. tendency, that is already discriminatory. Oh. So where do we go from here? It is that both the legislature and the executive okay. should, re should realize beyond ad admonition, exhortation, mm -hmm. that the country itself must survive first before the their private the individual first. ambition overrides the, the business of nation building. The My survival proposal of therefore, the country first. The survival of the country first. Great. That's, that's because it. if there is no if there's no country, you cannot have the forum. Thank you. Or the forum Thank to you. participate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your submissions on the Prime Team News tonight. Uh, we we had a good time talking to you. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to join us uh, in coming days again to look at uh, issues as they develop around uh, politics, politicking, and 2023 elections. Thank you very much. Thank you for the service you're rendering to my nation. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.